Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to find the tempo of a MIDI performance that was not recorded to a click in Reaper. Now a lot of times when I'm writing a melody or a drum part or a rhythm, I don't want to have to figure out what the tempo is before I record it. I don't want to lose the tempo or the feel or the groove, so I just want to record it and figure out the tempo later. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. We have a track set up over here. We'll turn off the metronome because we're not going to need it right now. Let's add a plugin to this track. I'm going to choose Easy Drummer and now I'll create a groove. Now again, I don't want to have to figure out what the tempo of that is. I just want to record it and figure it out later so I don't lose my inspiration. So let's record it again with the metronome turned off. Go into record. Now it's very important when we do this, not only do we play the groove, but we play the downbeat of the next measure or the next section, and you'll see why. Now it wasn't perfect, but it's a pretty good idea of what I want to use for my groove or my beat. And again, I recorded the beat in addition to the downbeat of the next section, right here. Let's hear it back. Now it's a bit sloppy, but we'll fix that later. Let's double click it to open the MIDI editor. Then we're going to select all the notes, Command A or Control A on the PC, cut them, go back to the beginning, hit W, and then paste them. This way the entire beat starts at the beginning. Next we want to mark off the end. So we're going to go right here. See our tool changes and drag this over. Let's zoom in a bit. And let's get right there and eliminate the downbeat of the next section, right about here. Now we can close this, and the end of this item is the downbeat of the next section. Now we're going to select it, right click it, and choose item properties. From here, we're going to choose the time base and set it to time. This is going to make sure that Reaper doesn't time stretch our MIDI item. And next we're going to go down here to Properties and choose to ignore the project tempo. And make sure it's set to the same tempo as your song. Right now it's 120. Make sure it's the same down here, which it should be. Hit OK. And now if we change the tempo of our song, it's not going to change the beat. Let's change it to 180. Our beat is still the same. It didn't time stretch when we changed the tempo. So let's put it back to 120. Although it doesn't really matter yet. And now we're going to hold down Shift and double click the item, which creates a time selection exactly the same size of our item, from beginning to end of our groove. Then we're going to right-click up here, and choose Set Project Tempo from Time Selection, and choose the option that says New Time Signature. Choose that one, and then we're going to decide our bars. The groove we have right now is two bars, so if we choose that, our tempo is about 78.5 beats per minute. Hit OK, and again, it doesn't change our groove, but it moved the lines to exactly match our groove. Bar 1, 2, and it stops at bar 3. Let's hear it. So now we can play our click, and it's going to match our tempo.
Now it's still a bit sloppy, so we can quantize it right over here. Perfect. Now it's quantized to the grid, and it's playing back at the tempo we recorded it at. So we didn't lose the feel of our groove. Now it's a good idea to glue it, to make a new item. And what that's gonna do, if we go to our properties, it resets this over here. Ignore project tempo. So now we can change our project tempo and this is gonna move. So if we recorded it and we're happy with our groove, but we wanna go a bit faster, we could change it right here to 95, and the groove's gonna change. Or 105. But now our beat, or our groove, is locked to our grid. So instead of us conforming to a tempo, Reaper conform to our tempo. Let's do it with the melody instead. Get rid of our instrument and choose a piano instead. Let's reset our tempo to 120 and let's record a groove again. But once again, we're going to turn off the metronome so we can create our own groove. Go into record. And again, we play the downbeat of the next measure. Let's hear it back. Again, it's not perfect. Let's double click it. Let's select all. Cut. W. To go to the beginning and paste it. Let's bring the ending to this last note. Right about here. We'll put this at the beginning. And right at the end is the next section. So now we'll right click, choose properties, change our time base to time, our properties to ignore tempo, hold down shift, double click. Right click up here, set project tempo from time selection. To create a time selection and choose our bars. This is also gonna be two bars. So it's about 85 beats per minute. Hit okay. And it locks our bars to our performance. And again, we can quantize it Right here, here back with the click, again it's perfect, and we can glue it, and now we can change the tempo and have it match. Let's set it to 100. But again, Reaper conform to our tempo rather than the other way around, which is how I prefer when I find a good groove or a melody. I don't want to have to play around with the tempo to try to match it. I just want to record it and analyze it and figure out what tempo I played. So anyway, that's how you find the tempo of a MIDI performance that was not recorded to a click. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.